Well, it's my pleasure to welcome Reverend Artu Polosky from Alberta, Canada. Uh, Reverend Polosky, welcome to the King's Report. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've been following you for many, many years uh, with your help for the trucker convoy and speaking the truth of God's word and being punished for that, which is unbelievable. Uh, it's almost hard to believe what, the, what we've been seeing the past few years. Please give our, the audience uh, kind of an overview of your contentious relationship with the, the government of Canada. Uh, well, as you can tell, um, I grew up behind the Iron Curtain under the, the boots of the Soviets. I'm a, a Polish immigrant. I uh, grew up in Poland in a city that had a concentration camp and we played as kids in the bunkers of the SS. So history and totalitarian regimes and, and being able to understand historically and firsthand what a government can do to people is very real for a Polish immigrant. Um, of course, I was hearing the stories from my grandparents about what the Nazis did and I uh, witnessed firsthand what communism and socialism is all about and it's hell on earth. So my parents decided to come to Greece and we spent a few years there and then eventually we end up in Canada, uh, the country of freedom, milk and honey where a man can achieve his dream and be free and um, and here I am 340 citations later, 120 courts later 16 arrests. So my trouble, if you will, uh, with the Canadian government started in 2005 when I was approached by the police and the bylaw services telling me that I am uh, not allowed to feed the homeless anymore because there is a law in Canada that giving free goods and services is prohibited uh, by law. So if you give a sandwich to a dying child, you're actually breaking the law. Also, I was told that congregating in the parks is illegal, distribution of printed material, Bibles, gospel tracts, that's also illegal. I was told that my signs are offensive and illegal. Jesus is king. Jesus loves you. So this anti-Christian sentiment started many, many years uh, before. So I read the Constitution. I was familiar with the Criminal Code of Canada, and I told them what they're doing is illegal, that I am within my rights. Of course, those people with pistols and badges and the politicians don't care about our law and order, so they started to harass us, intimidate. I received tickets after tickets. Sometimes, every, you know, during the day, I would get 15 uh, different tickets from our horrible activities of feeding the homeless, saving lives, and that was going on for. 10 years, from 2005 to 2015, uh, millions of dollars later, I lost my houses, I've lost my land, uh, millions of dollars, and then eventually 2015, I win in a court of appeal, and they leave me be for a few years. I was the first Canadian to be arrested for publicly reading Bible in 2006. I faced a year of imprisonment uh, because I read the Bible that the police officer declared offensive. I read the Psalms and they said that's a criminal activity. I was charged with seven criminal charges and faced a year of imprisonment. Fast forward, when I won all of that, they left me be. And for a few years, I enjoyed peace with government, and then 2020 showed up, and I received a letter. So here is what I do. I'm a pastor of two churches. The first one is Street Church. I feed the homeless people. We feed thousands of people on the streets of Calgary. I started about 40 ministries similar to this one uh, in the, on different continents. And I also pastor a church in a building where I teach theology and history. So when... This craziness happened, this big lie, as I call it. I received a letter uh, from the city hall telling me I must stop feeding the poor because we are in the middle of crisis. And they're shutting down shelters and soup kitchens and, and that's it. Um, so I appealed it. I appealed it to the mayor and I appealed it to the premier of Alberta. I appealed it to the ministers with uh, his cabinet and no one replied. Here's what I said. I said, you people do not make any sense. If we're in the middle of this great crisis, as you are saying we are, well, my services are needed more than ever. If you're going to kick 15 to 20,000 individuals facing homelessness on the streets of 
Calgary, if you unleash them, they're going to whack somebody's head. They're going to break into a garage. They're going to uh, break into a house grocery store because people need to eat. You just don't make any sense. I work with the homeless people for many years and I know what is going to happen. They will turn into violence. They will turn into, um, you know, criminal activity because people need to eat. Believe it or not, no one replied. No one cared. At that moment, at that moment, I knew. This is a lie. This has nothing to do with keeping uh, people healthy. This is uh, nothing to do with saving lives. Uh, quite opposite. We've lost thousands of homeless people uh, because of this uh, eugenics, uh, this um, attack on our lives, on our freedoms. Um, so I kept feeding the poor. So 12 officers showed up. I received the first COVID ticket in the, in the country. I became the first victim of this tyranny. 12 officers threatened me, my parishioners, assaulted one of my parishioners in the church, and I received the COVID ticket with a threat. I will be arrested and I would get a million dollars award of tickets. So fast forward, every single time we were meeting, we had a bylaw services, police officers, and health inspectors uh, during our church services. I was hunted down, intimidated, harassed. I had uh, police in my house. I had detectives knocking at my doors. I was being followed. Um, and then at the end of 2020 came and uh, during that time, our Canadian government, uh, provincial, federal, municipal came on television right after the Halloween, which was perfectly OK and safe. And they declared that they're canceling Christmas. I don't know. I don't know if you remember that. But during that time, singing was illegal. Uh, Lord Sapper was illegal. The chief of police said that he's going to monitor with his officers driveways. If there are extra cars, the cops will break the doors and will arrest everyone in the house you're not allowed to sing you're not allowed to have a coffee with your brother um, at the same time you could take your entire church to ikea because 500 people were allowed in ikea you could take the church to liquor store abortion clinic those were essential services you could take them to walmart you could take them to safeway or any other mega store and that was perfectly uh scientific and that was perfectly illegal however you could not have a brother in your house for coffee no christmas dinner so what i did mm -hmm. i mean i'm a polish immigrant Mm -hmm. I've seen this movie before. I know that those people are tyrants. Those people are wannabe pharaohs. So I invited my family and my friends for the biggest dinner I could master. And I took pictures and I sent it to the villains. And I said, come and get me. Um, so I also did Unthinkable. I organized a Christmas celebration in the city of Calgary. And I organized AAA stakes for the homeless and gifts, hundreds of gifts for the poor. And we had a lot of people showing up. We also had... Uh, during Christmas celebration in our church, which is my record so far, over 100 police officers, 52 police cars, anti-terrorists, uh, 20 cops on bicycle and the chief of police. And I did, according to them, I did the unthinkable. I did the most horrible crime that they said, because of me, thousands upon thousands of people can die. I had Christmas carolers we were singing uh, during that time and i end up with 15 covid tickets so that's 2020 and then they started to attack us in a building so first they blocked our entire driveway then they took uh, telescopic cameras and they were taking pictures of our women and children and then the famous uh, video get out video uh, happened when authorities decided to break the criminal code of canada section 176 one two and three and they invaded our church inside even though they were trespassing uh, they came and the only thing i had to tell them is get out get out of this property and they did but they came back with a vengeance and that vengeance is hunting me down to this day they found crooked judges the first one, David Gates. David Gates gave them the power to enter our building with whomever they wanted to and 
anytime they wished. So they showed up with SWAT team, anti-terrorists. I kicked them again. They came back again. I kicked them again. Then they went to the boss of judges, the mafia guy, uh, John Rook, the crook, I call him. He is the associate chief justice in the province of Alberta. He gave them the power to arrest four and a half million Albertans if any one of them would dare to oppose a health official and not allow him to come with the inspection. Well, I didn't allow them to come. Anti-terrorists showed up. They opened the, 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 the doors of the church. I was already preaching and they realized this is going to be um, a blood bath. They waited for the people to go home and I got arrested with my brother David in the middle of the highway on our knees, taken to a police station, tortured. Um, I had uh, bruises for over a month. And we spent three days and two nights on concrete. And in the morning, uh, we were taken to see the next crooked amigo, Adam Germain. Adam Germain started the proceedings by saying that we're in the middle of this pandemic. And, 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 and he sounded like CNN a reporter. He sounded like CBC reporter. And I turned to my brother, David, and we were shackled like animals. I said to him, we don't stand a chance with this judge. He's not a judge. He's a political activist. And that's where I decided to go to the state to share my story with Americans on the way back. I don't know if you remember, I stepped out of the plane and I was immediately arrested by Canada's uh, finest, I guess, charged criminally on tarmac. The moment I stepped out of the plane, I was arrested and criminally charged for inciting people to come to church, officiating in legal gathering, participating in legal gathering. I was even criminally charged for baptizing my daughter in a river in a public park. So I received over 40 citations during that time, arrested, let go, re-arrested on bail. And that was going on, attended a rally, arrested, attended protest, arrested, my brother David as well. And then the track convoy came. A track convoy, I have to tell you, was one of the most beautiful things I have ever seen in Canada. People coming together in unity, in solidarity, uh, a white, black, yellow, green, red, it, it didn't matter, uh, from every creed, every language, uh, atheists, Christians, Muslims, Hindus, in their turbans, everyone came together under the umbrella of freedom. It was absolutely amazing. I've never seen something like this before in Canada. That's what Canada was always supposed to be all about. People were feeding each other. They were loving each other. They were hugging. Uh, They were singing hymns. I was there. I delivered a sermon. We had Lord's Supper. We were singing National Anthem. We were singing hymns and our CMP was there. Our CMP is like American FBI. They blocked the street and they prevented people from going to Kut. So I went to them. They filmed me. They took pictures. And I said, I would like to go to Kut. I got invited there to do another church service. They opened the barricade and we went with my son, Nathaniel, and our worshiper to Kut. What did I do in Kut? Well, I reminded Canadians about history. I was actually telling them about solidarity. I was telling them that I am a witness of great tyranny, but I also witnessed great power when millions of people in Poland finally said enough is enough, and they did it peacefully. I reminded them about Gdańsk, about Lech Wałęsa, about peaceful uprising. I reminded them that there is more of us than of them, the villains, that they don't have enough police officers. If millions of Canadians will rise up, it's over for the wannabe farers. I told them to rise up, to stand up for God and state given rights, and to do it peacefully, to do it for the sake of the children, to hold the line. I told them no guns, no swords. This is not how you fight, but you simply paralyze their system by refusal to cooperate. Non-compliance, civil rights, disobedience, Mahatma Gandhi way, Martin Luther King Jr., uh, you know, civil rights movement way. And um, I spoke for about 19 minutes. We had Lord's Supper. 
uh, so Holy Communion. We were singing hymns. We had a dinner with them. It was peacefully, no problems whatsoever. A few days later, when I stepped out of my house, I was arrested by anti-terrorists, detectives, RCMP, uniformed Calgary police, undercover, special uh, anti-terrorist group. They blocked the road. I'm telling you, it looked like they were, this was a, a great takedown of Al Capone of Canada, El Chapo of Calgary. It was a gong show. I was interrogated by RCMP people hours, taken to prison, put in solitary confinement, next day in metal cages. To this day, we don't know why they did that. Back in solitary confinement, my Bible's confiscated. They would not give me my glasses. And then from solitary cell to a concrete cell, no water, no washroom. And that was going on for 40 five days three weeks they denied my access to my lawyers confiscated my write-ups for the eyes of the lawyers only and then i was literally kidnapped by the by the sheriffs and taken to edmonton which is hundreds of miles away and listen to this i was placed in a max spot max spot is a place for the most dangerous terrorists i was there by myself no other inmate was there with me freezing conditions i was sitting there shivering i asked for a blanket they refused to give me one uh, they were laughing at me saying at least i have fresh air i couldn't sleep i couldn't function they would not even give me a pen they said i am considered the most dangerous inmate and i am not allowed to have a pen so during that time, there was five different inmates that already testified that the guards were giving them incentives to beat me up or to murder me in 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 jail. And you got to remember, during that time, they put my house on fire, they lit my my church on fire, um, they burnt our school bus, uh, they unscrewed tires of my pickup truck. I was physically attacked. Our church was vandalized for three months. Uh, they broke. They stole our equipment. So we were constantly under heavy evil attack. Uh, so I called my wife and actually, I actually said farewell. I said to her, I don't think I'm going to make it. I think their intention is to kill me here. And so if I don't see you, well, I will see each other on the other side of eternity. And the, the judge learned about this. The judge learned about the treatment they were giving me. And the next day, it scared them. So they took me from Max Pod, and believe it or not, they took me to a mental institution. They took me to a psych ward against the law and without doctor's evaluation, without even knowledge of Alberta Health Services, a sane person was placed with insane. How do I know that? Because doctor came to see me and says, Mr. Pulaski, what are you doing here? And I said, I don't know. Guards came and, and brought me here. He says, you're not allowed to, to be here. Uh, they are not allowed to do that. I mean, this is completely illegal. Um, so I spent 50 days in prison. Uh, most of it in solitary confinement. Eventually, I was released on bail, placed on house arrest. I'm talking to you from my house office. I am still on house arrest 16 months later. Um, we've, we uh, had a trial in February. In February, um, uh, the Crown Prosecutor accused me of causing um, Canadian economy over $400 million worth of damages. He said that my sermon was, uh, he compared it to a Rwanda genocide. He said that my sermon was like someone inciting murder on other people. Mm. Um, no witnesses were called. I'm the first Canadian in the history of this country that my sermon, my words were on trial word by word, and they were debating what Mr. Pulaski meant when he said solidarity. According to the Crown Prosecutor, solidarity movement in Poland was a violent coup. Uh, it, it's it's total insanity. I mean, I it's it was surreal. It was like watching in some kind of a twisted psychological thriller. It, it was it was insane. But what's more shocking is that a month later the judge found me guilty on everything. According to him, I'm a terrorist. I was charged with inciting mischief. I'm the first Canadian ever to be found guilty of this crime. 
in the history of this country. I'm the first one ever to be charged with eco-terrorism, interfering with the crucial infrastructure under the Defense Act, and I'm the first one ever to be found guilty of that. And again, what did I do? I gave a sermon to hurting desperate people, telling them no violence, no guns, no swords, peaceful, non-compliance, a civil rights movement style, solidarity style. So um, it's very interesting because uh, not only I have been found guilty on ecoterrorism and inciting mischief, they also charged me with um, a release order. And they said that because I uh, did a sermon to the truckers, I was not keeping peace and I was not of good behavior. Therefore, they charged me uh, with that as well. My sentencing is August the 9th. Uh, the judge at his disposal has up to 10 years of imprisonment for my horrible crime of delivering a sermon to a hurting people in a times that we've never seen before, in a times of the greatest abuse of power done by Canadian government against Canadian people. I, I, I'm speechless. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I, I thought Canada was a, a free, a free nation, <laughs> but I, I do, do you, what happened to Canada? Can you explain? I mean, I, I, do you know the background of this? I'm, I'm curious if you. Yes, I, I, I teach history, so I'm very familiar with, um, with the psychology, uh, with uh, the mechanism, if you will how to do it and it's very actually simple if you don't pay attention it is done by indoctrination when you control the mainstream media when you control the message um the narration of the message and when you violently indoctrinate children when you're telling them that socialism and communism is good, that the government is the good um, uh, guy, that, that the big brother will watch over you and will pay everything for you and, and you have everything for free. When they don't teach history, when you're not being taught what happened, Canadian children are not being taught history. They're being indoctrinated left and right. When everything government is doing in their power to control every, and I mean every aspect of your life, you become dependent. Like a Stockholm syndrome, I don't know how else to explain that. When you're being abused, you get I guess you get to love your abuser because it's a familiar thing. You have spent so much time with the abuser, it's, it, it becomes your lover and you start to love the abuser, which is a crazy concept. So right. what happened to Canadians, they had too good for too long. They were not paying attention. They were not interested in being the light in the darkness. Uh, they stayed away from politics. Uh, but like my, my, my son, Nathaniel always says, you may stay away from the politics, but politics for sure is not staying away from you. Right. They will dictate. They will tell you what they want. They will tax you to death. You got to remember Canada or Canadians are taxed to death. We pay 55% in taxes. Half of what we earn, they steal from us and they blow it on petty uh, pet projects. Like, like they're really literally blowing our money away. So they're raising taxes. Uh, Trudeau Castro, or like my son Nathaniel calls him the modern day Caligula, the mad emperor. Well, he raised what three times carbon tax. I mean, we are being taxed simply for breathing uh, right now. It's, it's total insanity at the highest level. Our economy is collapsing because that's what socialism and communism does. You got to remember. Communism and socialism is a big government is a huge bureaucracy in a province of Alberta. Believe it or not, we have four and a half million Albertans. Half of them, less than half of them are capable working people. So 450,000 of them are bureaucrats working for the government. Uh, I mean, this is, this is so shocking. Then when I, you know, when I share that people are like, what? 
So we have managers of managers chasing managers, supervisors of supervisors. Uh, it's insanity. The healthcare workers alone are 120,000 strong. And they are not doctors and nurses. Most of them, or a lot of them, are supervisors. They're bureaucrats. Um, it's, it's a craziness. You know that the newest statistics, and this is a shocker, and this is just came out, I think, yesterday, that av average, you know, Canadian household next year will have to pay, listen, $50,000 on healthcare. 50, five, zero on healthcare alone. We have grew this leech, this beast, beyond sanity, and we will not be able to service this. So Canadian economy is collapsing as we speak. I was told by a friend of mine, a banker, 25% of Canadians very very soon are going to lose their homes. They cannot service their homes on them, or they cannot afford taxes, and they cannot afford the higher interest rates. A half of downtown in the city of Calgary is empty. The high rises, the buildings are empty because they raised the taxes to the point that the companies packed their stuff and went to Texas because Canada is killing business. Canada is killing middle class um, uh, people. They're creating two categories, extremely powerful, the elites, the globalists, and they are eliminating the opposition. Uh, why middle class? Uh, middle class people are highly educated, well-traveled. They're smart people, highly uh, family oriented. Uh, many of them are Christians, hard working. They received businesses from their parents, their grandparents, and they want to leave a legacy, the inheritance for their children. So those types of people need to go. And they're creating two categories, powerful elites and then slaves. And Canadians are literally in front of our eyes being turned into slaves. Why that happened? Because Canadians have become greedy, selfish, self-centered, and Canadians became anti-God, anti-Christian. Mm. Canadians have decided that they don't need God, that they are gods, that they can live their life according to what's acceptable to them. In other words, I say what is the truth. In Canada, we have the biggest amount of suicides in a history of, of this nation. We have the biggest amount of fentanyl overdose ever seen in this country. We have become a nation of lawlessness. We have become a nation that is godless. We march on the streets of our cities naked. If I strip myself naked, if you strip yourself naked, um, you will be arrested for indecent exposure. There are criminal code protecting others from your or this type of behavior but homosexuals transgender are marching naked on the streets of our cities no one can say a thing to them they're protected but if a christian preaches a sermon my son nathaniel preached outside of during the protest outside of the drag queen story, the grooming, the pedophilia that is happening in our country, left and right. And he was charged with illegally attending a protest and harassing people. He read the Bible and now it's harassment. He testified before the European Parliament just a few weeks ago and on, and he got standing ovation and people were crying when he was done on the way back with my wife when he testified against Canadian government, what is doing, what the government is doing to us Canadians, asking for help. He was detained and he was told by the customs that Calgary issued a warrant for his arrest. We are living in a totalitarian regime. We are truly living behind the Iron Curtain under the boots of Chinese. I call Canada China right now because it looks more and more like China. I have a, a friend she is Chinese. She uh, grew up in China. And she came to me about a month ago and she said, Pastor Art, we were freer in China than now in Canada. I mean, is that not a shocker yeah. to hear from immigrants that escaped hell coming to this great country, country of freedom, only to find uh, ourselves in the worst places than we escaped from? So this is what we are facing 
The fight is brutal. My um, sentencing is August the 9th. My son has been charged. I had to hire a lawyer for him now, $10,000, uh, 525 uh, bucks per hour, and they are not stopping. This government is bent on destruction and is pillaging, raping, destroying, and it looks like uh, they're not stopping. So that's why I decided to ask my American friends to help us to spread the word around, because if we fall, let this be a warning to you, my friends. If we fall, you're next. We are like a shield between the villains and you, but if that shield is destroyed, you're next. So we're asking for help. We're asking that you would support us and stand with us and spread the word around and warn your politicians and let the politicians start speaking about what is happening in China that behind the Iron Curtain here in the North, um, they used to be called the North Strong and Free. Now, it is quite shocking what you're saying. It's actually unbelievable. How can we help? Where should we? Where, where can we uh, give a donation or learn more? Uh, go to streetchurch.ca. It's our website, streetchurch.ca. I have to update it. I, I was focusing on my trial sentencing and uh, trying to um, let the people know what's really going on. So that's the website. There's lots of information over there. Uh, what we do, our primary thing, of course, is feeding the homeless. Uh, preaching in the church and uh, we do marches for jesus as well so right now you see um, a ministry that is feeding thousands of people on the streets of calgary so uh, you can help us there streetchurch.ca streetchurch.ca um, and um, send the letters uh, to your representatives so let them come let them support let them speak up because um, the politicians in canada are like cockroaches and they are spreading their disease left and right. And you know what they fear the most? They fear the light shining on what they're doing. So that's what I've decided to do. So here's one of my arrests um, when I was arrested in front of my house, um, taken by the police um, for nothing. Like, what have I done to deserve this? I am a pastor. I preach. I give people hope. I feed the poor. That's the definition of my work. But because we're Christians and Christians, are real Christians, cannot be controlled by the government, they've decided to destroy Christianity. It's like, it's like the pharaohs don't want any competition and they are doing everything in their power to finish off anyone that dares not to bow before them, just like during the time of Nebuchadnezzar with uh, Shadrach, Michigan, and Abednego. Well, this is, uh, I mean, this is completely unbelievable. And I, I do agree that we here in the United States, we need to support your your fight. Your fight is our fight. I mean, there's no, no question about it. Yeah. Well, Reverend Pulaski, we've run out of time today, but thank you for explaining I mean, it is just a shocking, un unbelievable situation, but thank God that you're standing up against uh, tyranny in the, in the name of God. I mean, you're, you're representing Jesus Christ, and um, we want to spread the word and support you. Yeah, I want to end with this. Don't lose hope. We have a saying in our church, winners never quit, quitters never win. We are lions. We're following the lion from the tribe of Judah. And you know what he said on the cross? He said, it is finished. It's over. We've won. We already won. The enemy just doesn't know it yet. So go out there, keep roaring, keep eating the hyenas, never bow before the evil. And I know that sooner or later, God is going to show up with his victory. We are destined to win. So I read the Bible. I know how the story ends. We win. Be blessed. Well, th thank you for coming on the King's Report and, and, and God bless you. Thank, Thank you. you.